I'm going to give you a talk today about applied game analytics research. For those not familiar with the industry and how we use data to make our games better, this is going to be a great introduction on the topic for you. So a little bit of background, I'm getting game analytics team lead for Ubisoft Toronto. And my team's responsibility is to deliver powerful insights to game developers through collection and analysis of player behavior data. So now that you know a little bit about myself, uh, let's check what's in the agenda for today. So I'm gonna cover uh, what it is, is a game telemetry system. Then I'm uh, gonna jump into real life examples of applications of game analytics. Then at part three, I'm gonna cover the gameplay metrics for different types of games. And finally, just brush a little bit on topics of what's next for in, uh, in game analytics. So let's jump right in. So a game telemetry system, uh, it's basically a collection uh, data pipeline. So for those not familiar with the topic, uh, games send events, or um, I'm gonna use the word here events or tracking or telemetry even like almost in an interchangeable manner because they all kind of seem to, to they, they have the same purpose, right? So here we can see on the screen, uh, players playing uh, Starlink. Uh, if you haven't played Starlink, I highly recommend the Ubisoft game. Um, and here we have, you see hooks, right? These hooks are what we call uh, moments of interest in the game. So these hooks are data points that are sent from the client to the game server with specific attributes and, uh, and data related that specific for that moment of interest. So for example, in, the, in our case here, we have player kill events being sent. We have a quest complete event and a level up event. So this can all happen maybe at the same time, depending on the type of game that you're playing. You Maybe you have to kill two enemies that are part of the quest. So you complete the quest and you get enough XP to level up. So these things can almost happen at the same time or they can happen in different uh, time of the player experience. So once the data points or once the data is sent from client to game server, uh, the data is uh, the data is distributed into big data platforms such uh, Hadoop. Next, the data is extracted, transformed, and loaded. I'm sure everyone here is very familiar with what an ETL process is. So that will allow us, the game analysts, to consume data in a structured and tabular form at database. Um, finally, uh, we are able to analyze millions, if not billions, of records by using uh, SQL, Python, or R and the data is ready for consumption in uh, whatever BI platform you are more prone to use. In this case, we heavily use the Tableau at Ubisoft. So this is a quick overview of uh, what is a game telemetry system, how the game uh, pushes data through server, and finally it's ready for consumption. Now let's take a look at real world applications of game analytics. So let's start our first example with a melee combat playtest. So as, as you know, most of our open world games involve some sort of melee combat. Uh, for those not familiar what melee combat is, basically hand to hand, we're not, when you're not shooting, you're either using your fists or a, uh, a, a weapon to, to damage or fight against your opponents, right? So in this case, the UR analyst, uh, short for user research analyst, uh, reaches out to the game data analyst, hoping that she will have some sort of data that support this type of finding. So uh, there's evidence suggesting that players are getting hit from all angles in melee combat. This seems to be light linked to a negative experience. Uh, do you have any data that can help with that? Um, in this case, the game data analyst, knowing really well what's the, what the game sends, what are the attributes and uh, the frequency of the data points, uh, says, you know what, let me take a look and see what I can do. So here, uh, the, data, the game data analyst presented the user research analyst with this chart. It shows the different angles that a player was attacked from. Um, indeed, the, it seemed like the observation from the test was quite valid. As you can see, the player was getting hit a lot from different angles. Uh, imagine the player 
facing where most of the points are uh, grouping together. But also you can see a lot of points spread almost in a, in a nicely distributed way uh, along the sides of the player left and right and back. So this data was presented to designers and they agreed that the AI was behaving super aggressively and not intended. So they adjust the, uh, the algorithms and a new test was performed. Let's take a look at how this did impact the game. There you go. So that's a much better experience from the, that melee combat perspective. Vast majority of hits happen in the front of the player. Uh, the team was quite happy with those results and you can see almost the, the uh, that points also, would, they are much less than the other. So the aggressions of the AI was scaled down. And uh, they said, you know what, this is pretty good. You're still supposed to get hit from different angles, but the points being grouped in front of the players make total sense. Now let's take a look at a driving experience. So driving vehicles is a big part of our vast open worlds games. And uh, it's a very delicate subject because what feels good for player A might not necessarily feel good for player B. Um, then you throw in the mix different vehicle types with their own physics, world objects, pedestrians, weather, and it becomes a very complex game system. So for this example, uh, there were two driving play tests that took place in pre-made circuits or what was what we call in game development gyms. So they're not using the, the entire open world, uh, but it's almost like a, a subsection where with very controlled environments. So the picture shows the path uh, driven by the players. The goal was to identify issues with driving experience with multiple vehicles. Uh, the one thing that we can't control is player skill, but we can change. We can make changes to the level design and vehicle tuning. So how did we present the team with this analysis? So after the test, the game data analyst identify high collision areas of the map by segmenting the circuit into quadrants. The darker the quadrant, more collisions happen. So you can see the average of eight collisions across all quadrants, but there's one particular um, spot where 55 collisions were recorded. Uh, because we have a way to triangulate uh, gameplay, tracking, and video recording, we showed a lot of these recorded sessions to level designers and a few issues that in per that particular area uh, of the map uh, surface almost immediately. We saw a large number of vehicles uh, that were parked on, on the wrong side of the road. Uh, unbreakable objects that from the player perspective, these objects should be able to, you should be able to break and not really affect too much of your speed. And also uh, the vehicle handling tuning. So with that information uh, on hand, they went to their back to their design and uh, another test was conducted. So as you can see, the overall number of collisions went down dramatically from eight to three across the circuit. And our problematic spot reduced from 54 to only 11 collisions. This was a very good result uh, since it was tricky part of the circuit and it was expected the players actually had some crashes. Uh, and also again, having the data and being able to plot in an easy to visualize way was extremely important to help the team to pinpoint issues that probably would have gone unnoticed or taken way too long to be discovered. Now let's take a look at a live game, a game that is already out there affecting the experience of millions of players. So for those familiar with the, with the game I'm gonna talk about, you'll probably resonate with some of these uh, points uh, so here we're going to be looking at a PvP, a first-person shooter, where a new hero was added to the pool of selectable characters. So basically, every uh, every so often, there's a new hero. Uh, you, that, that hero has different abilities and gameplay style. Um, as usual with PvP and FPS's uh, competitive games, the, the team tried to find a balance of 50% win-loss rate between uh, Team A and Team B, and maybe it could be offenders and defenders, assault and defenders, depending on the game mode. And the community voiced uh, concerns about this change. So let's take a look. 
Okay, so what happened is that, just bear with me, there's a lot of information on this slide. Uh, basically, we had a situation where the game, as you can see here on the top line that's going down from 2.0 down, uh, this is the KD ratio of that here that was added. Uh, the blue line represent kind of the, the average of all the other heroes uh, in the game. So as you can see, the KD ratio of that particular hero was way up high. And the community was saying that uh, whoever picked this uh, hero uh, was gaining an unfair advantage. And the game designers wanted to know more uh, why. why was, what could have been potentially causing this? And uh, game analysts uh, came to the conclusion that, the, in fact, this hero was way too powerful. Not because he was killing more, uh, it's just because he was dying less. Because this hero had a shield uh, as part of his equipment. And that shield had way too many HP points, so it was very hard to kill him and give him an unfair advantage. So with that information, uh, game designers didn't want to tweak the system too much. And they said, okay, we're going to tune it down a little bit and see how that goes. And it was still very disconnected from the other heroes. And uh, a third pass was necessary to bring this hero down. Um, sorry, a second pass was necessary to bring this hero's uh, KD ratio down, putting him almost uh, very close to the average line of the other heroes. So uh, I hope uh, I was able to demonstrate here with a few examples of applications of game analytics in different development cycles. Uh, so let's take a look at gameplay metrics. Um, in order to uh, in order to understand a little bit of all the possible gameplay metrics, uh, for me, it would be impossible, for, uh, first of all, to cover everything. But we got to start with something, um, a, a very common question that we face a lot in development is, what should be tracked? Um, everything? Not really. Uh, because tracking everything in the game is not a realistic option in the real world. Tracking every single user behavior uh, requires extremely uh, high amounts of analytics resources in place, and the cost benefit of having all everything being tracked in the game uh, does not add up most of the time. You end up in a situation of diminishing returns. In addition, uh, tracking, uh, adding tracking to the games compete with valuable programming time. Uh, so with that in mind, the analytics teams have to be fully aligned with production teams to ensure that tracking will always carry the right attributes that will allow us to provide valuable insights from the data collected. In order to understand user behavior, we need to determine what should be tracked. We follow this approach. First, we sit with the feature owners to determine what kind of data they need, what kind of, what kind of information they think they need in order to validate their assumptions. Uh, next, uh, the tracking is integrated, those same hooks that I showed before in the second slide, into the game code. Once we have the data collected, uh, sorry, once we have the data generated, this data is collected from play tests and processed for analysis. And finally, uh, the knowledge is deployed to our stakeholders. And obviously that cycle can have multiple iterations depending on how much feature has changed during the game development. Now let's take a look at gameplay metrics. So for me to cover everything here, like I said, would be impossible. So let's start with the universal business metrics that every game out there, sorry, I'm just gonna sip of water. I'm going faster because of our time. Um, yeah, so universal metrics are metrics that every game out there uh, it must have. Um, obviously, number of active users, average play time, session duration, days played, monetization, and churn. So these are the metrics that will check the pulse of our, if your game is doing good or bad. Next, we have a category of games, um, and they have the own. They each have their own metrics that are more important for them. So for shooters, we often look at balancing metrics, like I mentioned before with our shooter example. So KD ratio, uh, weapon balancing, 
in matches played. For action RPGs, uh, most of our the, most of the metrics that we can we would pay more more attention to are progression metrics, such mm -hmm. as how much experience the players are gaining per hour, uh, how much is the how how long is the each mission or quest duration, and how are players developing their characters. Uh, least but not last but not least, strategy games. So these are resource intensive management games. And obviously, the metrics should be around crafting materials, troops, upgrades, and actions per turn. All right, so I hope this gives you a good understanding of overall metrics that we collect across different games. So let's take a look quickly on what's next in game analytics. So game analytics uh, is a relatively new field, and we have made enormous progress so far. However, we just started scratching the surface. Advancements in game analytics will allow us teams to use data to understand uh, what happened, but also predict what players will do and create specific content for them. So this is where recommendation systems will take place uh, based on data crunch from play styles, will be able to propose content that our players are more inclined to consume. And prediction models, uh, algorithms that will be there in place to predict not only business metrics, such as acquisition, retention, monetization, uh, but also what players do in game in order to be able to drop the uh, most relevant content at the right time for the gamer. So for example, uh, I mentioned the sales forecast. We can predict uh, their playtime and what they will consume. How do you assess if a character like the hero you mentioned or any other feature will be successful or not before putting it into production? Have you performed any kind of A-B testing or something similar? Yes. Yeah, so uh, for first-person shooters, which are usually uh, very competitive by nature, there are test servers. So we have players that are invited to play the games in those servers. And that's where most of the tuning actually happens before uh, we patch it up and it goes live. Unfortunately, because of nature of 3.0 development, A-B testing is not something super easy to deploy. So you've got to keep that in mind. 